Welcome to Prerona Television Canada on behalf of Global Academy of Holistic Leadership and Coaching. We are very happy. We are continuing our um, uh, series, which is called Business, Economy, and Entrepreneurship Speaker Series. And we're very happy we're having our episode today. And today we will be discussing about uh, SMEs and how we can build really emotional intelligence leadership, emotionally intelligent leadership. So today's topic is very important or uh, very interesting. So before we uh, start our session, as we know, this uh, Prerona TV in collaboration with uh, Global Academy of Holistic Leadership and Coaching, we are based in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And we are registered institute uh, in federally and registered in Ontario and in Alberta. We are providing regular uh, speaker series, regular series to, um, to our audience. And today we are happy that we are having a distinguished uh, resource person from Bangladesh. He's a legal economist and he has been with us for the last couple of time. He's a regular contributor of our um, uh, forum. Uh, so we would like to thank uh, Muhammad Sajan Siddiqui and I would like to um, invite you to introduce yourself. Uh, he is a, uh, uh, a legal economist. So I will uh, ask him to at least uh, to tell more about yourself, what you are doing. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I am I am a regular columnist in daily newspaper in Bangladesh. And uh, so I, I was a teacher in uh, Dapodil University for quite a few years. Uh, and also I am a trainer. Uh, I used to train the in different institution or uh, training session organized by different chambers. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Mama Sadan Siddiqui. Um, I, uh, we are, um, so today our session is actually the SME, um, the small and medium enterprises. And we'll be specifically deal with how we can use um, the uh, uh, emotional intelligence uh, uh, in our uh, like emotional intelligence leadership. So one of the things that is very important to understand that leadership is one of those uh, role uh, that we sh uh, it is actually playing a very vital role in any organization. So this uh, right if uh, to be an effective leader, uh, we need to have a lot of traits or uh, things. So here we need to understand that how we can play uh, a vital role uh, in terms of leadership uh, for our organization. So I would like to ask uh, Momo Sazan Siddiqui, um, you have a lot of experience, even you have been uh, also an entrepreneur, uh, Bangla Chemical, I think you have other uh, credentials about your, I think, indenting and other uh, been associated with the chamber. So I would like to um, ask you to introduce your um, entrepreneurial background and also uh, how leadership is important uh, in your um, in your career or in your uh, journey as entrepreneurial journey. Oh, okay, so uh, I have started this uh, trading company Bangla Chemical in 1981. Uh, Bangla Chemical is representing some uh, overseas company for their product marketing in Bangladesh. <coughs> we are agent of a number of some of the European multinational company and uh, basically dealing with industrial raw materials. And I was also the president of uh, the agents association, overseas agents, it's, we call it indenting agents. So there is a trade body uh, named Bangladesh Indenting Agent Association. I was the president for 2015 and 16. Wow. And so uh, in, in, in a career, in a business career or in any career uh, or in a, any association, leadership in any, uh, any association, leadership capability, leadership initiative, leadership process is important. Leadership means, it doesn't, means encouraging uh, the others to work, to, uh, invite them to give them leadership leadership not uh, not only the leadership it's, it's more more 
inspiring the others to work. That is much more important aspect of leadership. So otherwise, uh, one can alone work uh, very efficiently, but in order to achieve a target, a single person, if a single person work, it does not, it's not sufficient. So the whole team should work. So leader is he who can uh, inspire others to work and achieve a goal, a target, or a mission, or a vision. Great. Yes, so thank you very much. Um, now, we know that uh, leadership is very important in terms of, uh, for any organizations. And uh, here, uh, one of the things is very important that emotion and leadership is very connected. So, uh, hello. Hi, yes, I can hear you. Yes. So the emotion and leadership is very uh, connected. So as a leader, uh, we also um, deal with our emotion. So uh, because as a practitioner, like when we have, uh, when we are running an organizations, the emotions, uh, we are actually dealing every day, a lot of challenges. So we are also dealing with our own emotion. So the emotional intelligence leadership uh, encompasses us the consciousness of self or consciousness about others or consciousness about context. So three different things like for yourself, like how uh, are you aware about yourself or are you aware about others or the context. So uh, as a, as a, as a emotionally intelligent leader, you have to, you know, have some traits. So for example, for emotional, uh, the first one, like we can call it as an emotional self-perception. So what we are doing here is identifying emotions and their impact on behavior. So, and so what is this all about is actually naming or understanding our emotions. And we are aware of how situation influence influ emotions and how emotions impact interactions with others. So it is very important that we need to understand and be aware of that. So, so this is emotional self-perception. Now, after going to that one, right, when we are having when we are, when we are having awareness, we also have kind of a emotional self-control. So like consciously moderating, how we consciously moderating our emotions. And we can call it like emotional self-control means intentionally managing our emotions and understanding how when and demonstrate them appropriately. So emotional intelligence leader take responsibility for regulating their emotions are not victims of them. So this is important to understand. And after that, now how we can display our empathy. So when we are actually um, being emotionally in tune with others, and empathy is about perce uh, perceiving and addressing the emotions of others. So emotionally intelligent leaders place a high value on the feelings of others and respond to their emotional cues. And the other thing that I'd like to share with you is inspiring others. How we inspire others, energizing individuals and groups. Inspiration occurs when people are excite, excited about a better future. So emotional intelligent leader foster feelings of enthusiasm and commitment to organization's mission, vision, and goal. So these are the things that we we learn from emotional intelligence leaders. Now, I would like to ask you, like we have, I have shared with you a few things and you know uh, from your, uh, very, you have a very uh, good experience in the field of the in, uh, in industry and academic. So these are the things, what are the practices in context of Bangladesh, right? Are we practicing this emotionally intelligence leadership, right? Are we aware about ourselves? How do we do a, like a self-regulation, right? Like anger management, like if somebody, for example, in an organization, they are having conflicts as a manager or as an entrepreneur, as a leader, are we uh, reacting appropriately? So from your experience, can you give some examples and then sh share with us? Oh, it's very important to uh, know uh, one his own self because what is the ability, what is the capability, what is own target, they should understand what are, uh, whether a person is capable of doing the thing. 
that's why the own assessment is important it is not not only uh, if if I, if i am not capable to do something i should not take responsibility of that job or i shall prepare myself it is uh, preparing in knowledge preparing in uh, behavior preparing in uh, knowing others knowledge gaining knowledge about the say for example if if we want to sell a product when we start a business first of all uh, we must know the product we must know the market we must know the people those who are buyers we must know the customers and and it's not a machine when we approach a person to buy a thing a product for example he may say no i don't need it actually he need it but he is not mentally prepared at that time to listen to others he is other uh, otherwise engaged or he is irritated otherwise or he is in problem or his mind is uh, engaged and elsewhere so i shall have to understand whether this is the appropriate time to approach a person uh, and and how to approach uh, the present uh, how to present to a person because individual person have their individual ideology individual thinking individual way of life uh the single uh, product the same product if we offer to the 10 person the approach will be 10 different because the people are different and our behavior will be uh different and uh, but there are some common things we cannot we must present ourselves as a perfect set a person because before we are selling a product we must gain confidence from the customers if we if we don't gain confidence it is it is not only talking i am a good man my products are good these these that no the 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 behavior the my behavior my presentation my knowledge my experience and the way i present uh, to the customer prospective customers that's important at the same time the a same person in the morning he is in a good mood he he will listen to me but say for example in the afternoon he uh, after he is exhausted so he will not listen to me properly he will be happy to say no to me but again in tomorrow morning uh, he may invite me say please come i want to listen to you. i need this product so how to link the people people to people how to link mentally uh, with the other buyers is very important uh, that's why Uh, the, first of all the, one person must assess himself he must understand his product he must understand the market situation he must understand the atmosphere of the customer customer's office uh, the characteristics the culture of the company and culture of the country everything should be uh, the, the, the seller should understand and then only a proper a pre- presentation is possible and if the if the if the buyer find uh, less sincere the seller or the sales person is less sincere he will not accept the proper offer maybe a good product but the approach presentation there there should be a sincerity or uh, the approach should be like that i i want to sell to you but you also need this product for this 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 reason it's a suitable product it, it is it is essential for you or you like it it is a appropriate product for your requirement it, it is not only not only by talking it is it the seller should be should understand himself that it is the right product when he understand when he believe it then he can transfer the idea to mm-hmm. others if himself believe it then the he can make the buyer believe that it is appropriate product for them so the all these things uh, actually require the intelligence uh, iq of the people and and the involvement after after talking to a customer for 10 minutes for one hour uh, there should be a mental attachment uh, between the buyer and seller otherwise he cannot convince a, a customer to buy his product these are the in nutshell i can say you oh, thank you very much um, 
as we know, this is a very interconnected, like emotions and leadership. So, and, uh, Professor like Ms. Mohammad Shahzan Siddiqui, he has already mentioned that um, from his experience, he rightly mentioned about how it is interconnected. Uh, we we are actually uh, going um, more about it and just understanding how it is, um, how we can develop. Now, first, let us discuss about, um, pretty, like in depth about consciousness about self. That means self-awareness. Like, how we can demonstrate like emotional intelligence, emotionally intelligent leadership, and like to involve that awareness of personal abilities, emotions or perceptions. Now, consciousness of self is about uh, prioritizing the inner work of reflections and introspections and ap appreciating that self-awareness is a continual and ongoing process. So as an, as an individual, like, you know, you are, you are as a person, you have a family, and now you go to workplace and you are our business, and you are also performing or you are representing there as a, as a person or a, as an individual. So how well you can manage or how you are aware of your abilities, emotions, and perceptions. And this consciousness uh, and these uh, reflections and introspections, how you are actually doing that, and are you aware of that? So with that, you know, I'd like to ask um, uh, Mama Shazan Siddiqui about your experience. <clears throat> Actually, uh, 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 the, uh, once somebody can learn about himself from the, uh, from the family, from the society, from the, uh, a person uh, became perfect with learning, training, education, uh, guidance from the seniors, uh, for, from the family, from the society, from the uh, workplace, bosses, leaders, uh, how to behave and how to present oneself. Uh, a person can understand about himself whether he is a he is a popular person among the family members. If he is a popular person, he, whether he is a uh, family, he is po popular among his society in the society where he lives. Whether he is popular in the workplace where he work. So uh, these are the uh, indicators uh, about his ability, uh, whether uh, a person is always correcting himself, improving his behavior, improving his knowledge, improving how to, how to meet, how to deal with the people. It's a very important to dealing people because it's not machine. People have their own perception, they have their own knowledge, the, so if someone or someone can want to convince be, be popular among the neighbors he should be a perfect he should understand his limitation he should understand his ability his capability and his sincerity to do something if, if somebody is not sincere about the person in front of him he should express his uh, his intention or his uh, desire to uh, and his liking, his face, his expression will tell this, uh, the person uh, before him, he liked the person before him. That should be expressed in his behavior, in his thinking, in his uh, word, uh, in his talking, and everything will express the same thing, that I like the person in front of me. That's why, uh, you know, the... Uh, Dale Carnegie says, one of the famous uh, author, he says, oh, when, when he used to visit a customer, he started uh, say himself, I, li I love the customer, I like my customer, I, I am sincere to the customer. He, asked, he used to give the self uh, training or uh, a message to himself that you like your customer, you, you be sincere to your customer. You, you be perfect, try to be perfect, try to be honest. Whether you are a perfect person, whether you are an honest person, that you must express properly to your customers. And it, this is the way one can uh, be a perfect person. A perfect person is uh, liked by everybody. And a, when a person is, can express himself uh, to others, then he can be a leader. Otherwise, People will not accept a person, imperfect person, 
or a person with, with less integrity, they will not like. But in order to achieve that, not only if somebody is honest, but it is not sufficient. The other should know that he is an honest person. Somebody should uh, know that he is a knowledgeable person or he has the leadership ability. The leader should prove himself that he is a good leader. Otherwise, he cannot lead a group of people, uh, a section of people in this society, in, in profession, in our private life, in our family, no higher. Everywhere should, we should prove our leadership ability and our sincerity, our desire to work, do something good for the pe other people and sincerely invite them to do something sincerely. That is, that is the best way to be a good leader. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, we already discussed about three facets of this one. The second one actually about consciousness about others. So like how it is actually doing, like how we are demonstrating emotionally intelligent leadership, uh, like is involves actually awareness of abilities, emotion or perceptions of others. So consciousness of others is about intentionally working with and influencing individual and groups to affect positive change. As we know, um, like if you're talking about organizations, we are kind of like we, we are meeting with people, we are working with people. We have a lot of um, like we're dealing with other stakeholders. So how well we are consciousness about that? Are we doing what we are doing or are we pushing our agendas or our right things and we are not caring and we, we, are, we, we are careless means we don't care what other things. So this is important that how the consciousness of others, do we have consciousness about others? Or that particular trade, how well it is accepted among the team members, among the employees. If a person, if a leader is consciousness about others, is, is it a positive thing? Or is it bringing a productivity to a company? Or the employee retention uh, is more when you have, you are conscious about others. So with that, I would like to ask again, your introspection or your reflections about this topic or area, consciousness about others yeah. as a leader. Yes, the consciousness is very, very important because if somebody is working in a country, <laughs> what is the country specific culture, the rules, tradition, they should understand. If, if, uh, when, uh, within the same country, the different company have their different culture, different policy, different ideology. Uh, we should know the uh, ideology, culture and practice of that company. Then the individual person whom we are going to meet, he, he is also an individual personality. Apart from the culture he, uh, he, he, he is taking from the or he is influenced by the culture of the country, culture of the company, or culture of the society. But even then, a person is an individual person. He has his own choice, his taste, his way of work, way of thinking. So in order to achieve something, you must know the counterpart. Be uh, your subordinate or a uh, customer, even when you are meeting with your boss, that is also important to know the boss, how, how he behaves, how he thinks. So knowing other uh, before meeting a person is very important. And, and how to meet, that is also a question. You may ask me a question, how to know about the others? It depends. Uh, there are many way of uh, collecting information or knowing the uh, customer whom he's going to meet. Uh, this is the, uh, there are, even even if you have an idea, sometime uh, with a plan, you, you approach a customer. You are going to about to approach a customer. Suddenly you saw the person, the way he uh, he's working or he's looking at you. Then, then you may change your strategy, uh, the way you want to present yourself or your product. So, so uh, you, you must know as much as possible about the counterpart. That is important first. And how to know it? There is a standard practice of we, we, we try to learn about the company, learn about the country, their culture, their tradition, or the, uh, the way they work. Somebody say, for example, during pandemic in Bangladesh, 
we we hardly met any customer but we we are trying to uh, communicate with them through telephone e email letter and many other things but even then uh, we are trying to assess we are trying to understand their requirement they are also helping us because a perfect company also try try to present themselves no, it is not only our job to understand the customer the customer also uh, try to make present himself properly uh, to us uh, to his counterpart like us uh, they want to uh, tell about the the procedure their requirement their understanding their demand everything they also express themselves so i i shall uh, as a salesman i i shall try to i shall listen to them i shall try to understand them then i shall make our strategy uh, to to behave and work with this uh, company or the individual person thank you now we'll go to the third uh, you know facets uh, the third facet is consciousness about context the environment like demonstrating emotional intelligence and leadership involves awareness of setting and setting and situation like consciousness of context is about paying attention to how environmental factors and internal group dynamics affect the process of leadership um there is a person gentleman actually did that research shank shankman in 2015 and he has rightly you know do the research and this consciousness about context research he has done so with that you know i would like to ask you uh, about your reflection and your uh, introspection about this area consciousness about context how it is important it's important because uh, uh what we are we are talking about how much we shall tell whether we shall how much we shall uh, express ourselves uh the content or the description of the product description of the company if 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 we make it access what what the counterpart desire that should be precise not not, not repetition of any word or not repetition of any sentence or over emphasis on something that should be balanced in language balanced in content balanced in presentation it should be brief and precise so uh, when we are going to present something uh, we must understand the, who is going to listen to me uh, how much time he has how much material information he needs uh, to assess uh, uh, my product or assess my company so when uh, that is it's a very important that when we are going to uh, present to a chief executive of a company we, we must be brief and very precise uh, and we are going to present to a mid level company the, uh, the presentation will be different when we, when we shall present to a front line uh, uh, person executive then our presentation will be a little bit different and each and every time the person in front of me is important that should be my intention to uh, convince or uh, tell him about uh, myself about my product about uh, the, or, or the necessity or the requirement or uh, to set fit to his requirement what is his requirement what i can offer that is appropriately uh, perfectly all right match to his demand and he demand and my presentation or my offer that should be perfectly all right that is properly i shall have to present to them so, um it's very interesting um, actually we are discussed these three facets and this um you know uh, you know other than these three facets there are 19 capacities of emotionally intelligent leaderships uh, it was actually done by like american heritage dictionary defines capacity as ability to perform or produce the capacity so this 19 capacity brings life of three facet of emotionally intelligent leadership in both learnable and teachable now we also have four capacities like for example um emotional um uh, with the uh, ei is emotional self perception number one uh, number two is emotional self control number three is displacing um, displaying empathy and number four is in, inspiring others so these are the four capabilities or capacities that are closely aligned 
with AI, emotional intelligence. Now, let us discuss about these 19 capacities of emotionally intelligence leadership. Now, uh, it is actually these three facets. So the first facet is called consciousness about self. The for consciousness about self, number one is emotional self-perception. So emotional self-perception is identifying emotions and their impact on behavior. That means, are we aware about ourselves? How we can identify our emotion and their impact on behavior? So that is the first thing. And then the next one is the emotional self-control, like consciously moderating emotion, how well we can uh, you know, moderate our emotion. So this is the self-control. And the next one is actually authenticity, is being transparent and trustworthy, which is very important, like how we can be authentic. The next one, uh, number four, is healthy self-esteem. Uh, having a balanced sense of self means we are conscious about self-esteem. If somebody says you are no good, no, we have a value. We have a self-esteem. We know ourselves. We know our strength. We know that there is a purpose in life. In religious context too, a person is created for a purpose. So we should have a self-esteem. So the healthy self-esteem, having balanced sense of self. The next one is flexibility, um, uh, being open or adaptive to change. Are we open? Sometimes we are not. Sometimes we are very rigid or sometimes we are so adamant or sometimes we have ego or uh, the issues that we don't accept others' opinion. And then the next one is optimism, having positive outlook, which is very important to grow because a person cannot grow unless this person has an optimism, having positive outlook. The next one is initiative, means you might have an attitude, you might have a good, but unless you're taking an action, you cannot, you cannot grow or you cannot go to the next step. So initiative, you have to taking action. The next one for this uh, first facet is conscious about self is achievement striving for excellence that means we always looking for excellence so we want to achieve so for example when we are in high school we said okay we want to pass the secondary school or oh, we dream after you know few years we'll be our ssc acc or something you know or we are to write for iba we are to get our uh, mba or we want to go our good business school or we will be a doctor or engineer so we, we are actually working towards achievement, striving for excellence. In professionalism, uh, like pro, or in the field of uh, those are practitioners, they want to go to the next level, right? You want to like, so they might get a different certifications, they might achieve something. And for technological thing, they are doing patents or they're doing some innovation. And they are getting like, uh, uh, for academics, they have research paper, journals or article published and they got citations and everything. So the different areas, they have different, they're striving for excellence. So we have to discuss about eight um, like uh, uh, capacities under this consciousness about self. I, I'm just repeating again for all of you. The first one is emotional self-perception. The second is emotional self-control. The next one is authentic, Authentic, uh, authenticity, uh, and number four is healthy self-esteem, and number five is flexibility, number six is optimism, number seven is initiative, and number eight is achievement. So uh, before going to the next facet, which is consciousness about others, we have discussed this, this, uh, these uh, uh, capability capacities under consciousness about self. So do you like to share, you know, your um, experience and just add something uh, in context of these areas, capacities for consciousness about self? I think uh, more or less we have discussed all these points already. Uh, uh, first of all, this self-esteem, uh, self knowing my, uh, myself, uh, mm -hmm. oneself, uh, what is capability, and sincerely presenting some to somebody 
and the self respect you have the self esteem is very important if you don't respect yourself you cannot expect a respect from the others so if you respect yourself it will reflect in your face and others will then start respecting you so in order to respect you you must know yourself you must uh, improve your knowledge improve your be became a confident about your your capability sincere about his capability sincere about his activities and very uh, very particular to uh, uh, target to achieve something so all this uh, perfection uh, will make somebody self respect and when somebody is uh, respect himself then he can present properly in front of a person the the person who will understand that he is a he respect he has his own respect he he has his known own knowledge he understand what he is he understand what he wants me to do what he is trying to present to me or oh, perfectly he did it then the counterpart will like him so in order to do this all these things you must be perfect in all respect and not only uh, perfect then you will have to present yourself express yourself properly honestly sincerely to the counterpart when they will understand your presentation will they will understand you and undertake the accept or receive properly your message then he can react positively so in order to do it the to primarily he, uh, the the person should be perfect himself then he will understand it and he he will believe that he is a perfect person but he knows the product he knows himself he knows the counterpart then he will present himself when he will present himself a perfectly in a balanced manner then the counterpart will understand him understand the subject receive the message properly then he will respond positively so this this positive if you want a res- positive response in any higher any, any in a, for any reason you meet, meet somebody this that should be communication properly sincerely honestly uh, it's important that's why it's important to get the reply to get the outcome or give uh, ex, uh, get a consent or, or become the follower the, the, for a leader then if somebody they understand the yes my leader i expect I, 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 the followers will have a idea about the leader if if the leader can present set to that idea yes he is a perfect leader then f- people will follow him thank you um, le- le- let us go to the next facet consciousness about others under this one number 9 is a uh, displaying empathy so displaying empathy is being emotionally in tune with others that means we are concerned about others it is not only the sympathy right you said oh i am sorry it's not about that but if somebody is like a for business contact if somebody is making loss and then go to them and then okay so being with them being empathetic with their situations understand okay so they are having these challenges so what we can do how we can assist so displaying empathy so this is very important now the next num- number 10 is inspiring others Uh, how we can inspire other energizing individuals and groups it is very important that we we in a group when you work in an organizations or in context of um any corporate context we need to energize individuals or groups now the next one number 11 is coaching others enhancing the skills and abilities of others which is important because some people you see when i first join in a corp- company i am not i'm new to a company i don't know anything or i have a challenges so i need someone to coach me a senior or maybe my leader or immediate supervisor they need to coach or you need to coach your uh, subordinates or your uh, your team members uh, capitalizing uh, on differences that means be benefiting from multiple perspective so sometimes we can get benefits of on difference like capitalizing how we can capitalize on difference sometimes some multiple perspectives people can Uh, bring a new perspective and that we can get benefit now developing relationships that means building a network of trusting relationship 
which is important because in order to grow for long term goals and objectives so like our in business i think if you want to uh, be there for long term i think this we have to develop relationship um i have seen or i've given example from some of the countries i like in japan some of the employees there are working there for lives mean for the whole life for one or one organizations why because they have developed a relationship they are committed and they are for the whole of their life they have been working there for organizations because of that relationship now building teams working with others to accomplish a shared purpose so how we can build team is we are working with others for a shared purpose so that's why we are building teams and new teams uh, and then developing citizenship how we can develop citizenship I mean fulfilling responsibilities to the group citizenship is kind of uh, in context of you know owning or like a sense of belongingness that means you are being part of it very actively or involved into this process so that is demonstrating citizenship fulfilling responsibility to the group and then the next one is managing conflict so managing conflict is identifying and resolving conflict this is important so sometimes we can see somebody can avoid the conflict or said okay now you deal with that but we when you get up the credit you will get the credit but when there is a problem you can you know you try to avoid so that should not be the way It means if there is a conflict identifying the conflict and resolving the conflict yeah. is very important and then the next one uh, which is i think number 15 i guess uh, it is a uh, facilitating uh uh like 16 is facilitating change uh for the facilitating how we can facilitate the change that means working towards new direction so that means if there is a change how we can facilitate the change so we are working towards new directions this is number i think uh 17 so with that you know we discuss about consciousness about our others let us just point uh, this one again the first one we discuss under the consciousness about others is displaying empathy the next one we discuss about inspiring others and then coaching others capitalizing on difference developing relationship building teams demonstrating citizenship managing conflict and facilitating change so these are the areas that we discuss on consciousness about others with that context uh, we are in, uh, means i would like to ask you again these second facets uh, do you have any reflections or do you have do you like to add something of course empathy is important because you must listen to the others to uh, to know about their problem their prospect their opportunity uh, and sincerely uh, be part of that problem or be part of the Uh, environment and express their uh, sincerity uh, and giving them the make the understand that he understood the problem or opportunity uh, everything each and every every aspect of his requirement then it means uh, then the uh, counterpart will uh, get interested in you uh, what do you want to say what do you want to then they will uh, eagerly listen to you before that you will understand his problem he will you will discuss uh, you listen to them you will discuss you will ask some question you will uh, you will agree with with the problem when you will agree with the problem uh, maybe you can also partially disagree uh, of course but that that also shows your uh, sincerity to understand the problem or you count ask the counter question Uh, then uh, then it proves that he is you are listening to the uh, problem of the others then it means uh, the counterpart would believe that you have empathy you are sincere about his problem and you you properly understood the problem then when on on you give a solution or you come for, go forward uh, uh, with a solution or a support anything else then then he will take it he will accept it he will accept you he will you will gain confidence of uh, the counterpart when you will gain confidence of the counterpart then he will start believing you he will start listen to you properly 
then you can present yourself or your product or your ideology, whatever you want to sell to the uh, counterpart. If he then listen to uh, you, he will give this, uh, he will be sincere if you are sincere. He will be, uh, then you can train him, you can educate them, you can give some information, you can share some knowledge, some experience, so that uh, he upgrade himself, he, he enrich himself, he understand your pro uh, product, your ideology, your idea, your concept, then he can properly accept it, take it, absorb it in oneself. When, when you can properly transfer your ideology, something, some idea to the counterpart, then it's easy for you to sell your idea, to deliver the idea, to, uh, and he will receive it, he will accept it, he will adapt it. When they will adapt it, then, then communication is proper. Then let him do this something, something, some work. Then it means at the same time, you have the responsibility to guide him, lead him in proper manner, or channelize him in a proper uh, way to, to achieve something. Or when he will achieve his target, his uh, something, he, as a leader or as a salesman or a, uh, as a guide, then you achieve your target. So in order to do that, uh, first of all, you will know the customer person, you give a sincere listen to him, then you tell your uh, ideology, your product or your thinking, then he will listen to you. When he will listen to you, he will absorb it, he will take it, he will take, accept it sincerely, then he will start working on it or he will take it. When you will take it, you give him some education, some knowledge, share some experience, then he will start working for you. You will be a leader. When, on, when your surroundings is working for you, you, you are just guiding them, you give proper understanding, training, then they start working for you. It indicates that you are a good leader or you, you transfer an ideology to others. So these are the way we, we, uh, somebody should work, somebody to lead a team. Great, thank you. Now, I'll just do the last um, two. Uh, the next facet is consciousness of, of context. Uh, so, under which is uh, analyzing the group, that means interpreting group dynamics, which is important. When you are working in a team or in a group, we need to understand how the group works. So, understanding or interpreting group dynamics. And the next one, the last one is assessing the environment, which is interpreting uh, external forces and trends. Understanding, you know, how it is affected. For example, the policy changes with the government or some environmental, economic, you know, like recession, like some of the other contexts or the how the uh, particular uh, sector or the industry is moving or the new trends and new technological innovations. So there are like other factors that are affecting the business. So this is in the environment. So this is also important. So with that, you know, we conclude the 19 capacities of EI leadership. So it's very important that we, uh, we discuss today, uh, you know, right, some of the aspects of emotionally intelligent leadership. And that is can, you know, if we are uh, emotionally aware or emotionally control, self-control, and then um, like we have a, uh, and also displaying empathy and inspiring others through which, you know, we can, we can, we can do a lo lot of things and we can be successful in our organizations individually and as an, as an organization and ultimately the productivity can be increased. So with that, I would like to thank you everyone, um, those who are watching with us. I would like to ask again, um, uh, Shadam Siddiqui, you would like to say anything, a uh, concluding remarks before we end this session. Uh, <clears throat> the leadership, uh, leadership is very important. You say, uh, the, your concluding remark, I heard that, you are talking about the uh, leadership of a group. Uh, when, when somebody is dealing with single person, uh, that is a, a one to one, or when we are dealing with a team, then the individual person is important. But again, they have they have an individual behavior, individual ideology. 
they have a group ideology as well. It is not only the single person. So leading a group, that is also another dimension of leadership. Uh, another another uh, style of approaching everybody equally. There should be, they should give equal importance to everybody. Again, uh, again, the combined, uh, the, the equal in, importance, again, th there are some different people. So individual people require individual attention sometimes. And also, uh, inspire them in a group. Uh, it's a not, not uh, the inspiring a person and inspiring a group, uh, not the same thing. There should be some more capability, some more understanding about the group behavior. So when the behavior is uh, of individual person within the group, it may change any time. Somebody may not accept it. Somebody may accept it or majority may accept it. But a perfect leader is he who can guide everybody in a... Uh, so in a nutshell that yes, everybody accepted, everybody understand the problem. In order to tell individual, but uh, something or educate somebody individual and a group is different because the presentation, the communication will be totally different. If they will have to understand the average quality of the people, average understanding, average perception of the people, a, a group of people, the, that is important. So for a leader um, uh, uh, in the society or in a company or a, a CEO of a company, uh, this uh, uh, self-knowledge, his own understanding of the people, uh, how they're working or the working environment. Somebody, uh, a leader, he's sitting in the office, say for example, a chief executive. The others are working outside the office. The environment in the office and environment in the outside is different. Or the team members, an individual person is working in a different market, different atmosphere. So, so their problem is not same. The, the leader must understand it. So uh, again, it is a teamwork. The, he will have to uh, organize the people, work unitedly. Uh, outcome should be output for the leader or the organization team should be perfect, the best, the perfect one, the optimum. That's why the group leadership uh, is much more difficult and uh, complicated. He should have more knowledge about the team, more knowledge about the different atmosphere, different per perception of the people. Uh, so my understanding is uh, that uh, emotional intelligence uh, is very important because he, the leader must understand himself. He, he, he properly express himself. He sincerely communicate with the individual member of, of his team. It, also if, uh, collectively with the whole team and understand their problem, understand their capability, educate them, train them, inspire them to achieve a target. Transmit his uh, desire his mission and vision to the team. Get them accept, take the, his mission and vision as a whole by the team uh, so that they collectively achieve the mission, vision of this company or vision of the team. So that's why the collective leadership or uh, working with the team is much more important. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are very happy and uh, we like to thank you for your um, for your presence and our your contribution and uh, our deepest appreciations from uh, our academy so on behalf of Glo um, global academy of holistic leadership and coaching and prerna television canada uh, we were um, we are conducting this session every uh, you know regularly and we uh, hope uh, next Sunday also we'll be offering, we'll be having a session. So we'd like to welcome you to join our uh, webinar, our session. Uh, so you can register and you can see our uh, next link in uh, soon uh, in our um, Facebook page, official Facebook page. And after this session also, this program is also been 
will be uploaded in our official YouTube uh, channel. So we'd like to uh, invite you to uh, also see if you if you did have a chance to look at it. But more important thing is now we are very passionate about you know increasing uh, your skill, your um, ability, so that you can be successful in your field, right? As an individual or as a as a as a leader. So you know we encourage you to take training because this pandemic has given us also an opportunity. So that's why we are very passionate about you know this uh, uh, building this leadership skill and through this emotionally intelligent leader i guess you know we can go to the next level and you know help our businesses sme small and medium enterprises there are some challenges uh, we are doing good but we want to do better and we can you know help uh, create more employments so there is no end of excellence so we have to always strive for excellence so with that i would like to thank you again and thank you again, Mama Sadan Siddiqui, our deepest appreciation for, from you. I, I know it is late in Bangladesh, it's actually midnight. So thank you for um, being uh, with us and for your um, sacrifice, for your dedication, commitment and contributions. So we re really thankful to you. So with that, uh, I know um, as, uh, this is a pandemic uh, time crisis. Uh, we, you, uh, we ask Almighty to bless everyone and stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you very much. Thank you.